Hi everyone, when it comes to the topic of secondary beams, there are a lot of questions and myths students have in their mind. Like, why it is important to provide a secondary beam in a structure? And what will happen if we do not provide it? Then, how to arrange the steel bars in a secondary beam? And at last, what is the major difference between a primary and a secondary beam? So, in this video, I am going to answer all these questions in a practical way. And before we jump into the main topic, if you haven't subscribed my channel, then kindly subscribe it and press the bell icon so you do not miss an update in the future. So let's get started with the first, which is major difference between primary and secondary beams. If a beam is supported on columns from both the ends, then this beam will act as a primary beam, as this can carry a huge load and can transfer the loads directly to the columns. Now, if one or both the ends of a beam lies on a primary beam, then this beam is called as secondary beam. These beams usually do not carry heavy load, so the steel requirement of these beams will also be less. You might be thinking, sir, why it is necessary to provide secondary beam when we have the primary beam in the plant? Let's understand it with an example. Suppose if there is a slab having span of 25 feet by 25 feet and it is supported by primary beams from all the sides, then there is a huge possibility that under furniture or partition wall load, over time this slab will bend. This will result in cracks in walls, floorings, due to excessive bending. Even plaster and false ceilings may fall off. So to support this thin slab, we have to place secondary beams to increase the stiffness of these slabs so that they do not fail under loads. Now, the general size of secondary beam that you can provide for spans up to 16 feet will be 9 inch by 1 feet deep. And for spans up to 25 feet, it will be 9 inch by 1 feet 6 inch deep. Coming back, the probable location where we must provide secondary beams are under a partition wall, between a slab having span greater than 18 feet and large openings inside a slab. Coming to the last topic, how we can arrange the secondary beam rebars onto the primary beam so that low transfer from the secondary beam to the primary beam can take place effectively. We will understand this steel layout through a Revit beam model. Here we can see, in order to rest secondary beam on primary beam, the main top bars of secondary beam should always be placed on the top of the top rebar of the primary beam like this. And in the same way, the bottom bars of the secondary beam should rest on the top of the bottom bars of the primary beams like this. If vice versa is done, then after construction, the secondary beam is bound to fail on site. From this beam model, we can see that the secondary beam is transferring a concentrated load on this location of primary beam. So it makes sense to provide extra saddle bars to the bottom of secondary beam bars so that the load transfer from secondary beam to primary beam can take place in an evenly manner along the length of the primary beam. Otherwise, there is a chance of cracks being developed in primary beam at this location. A minimum of two 16mm saddle bars having bend length of 3 feet along the length of the beam are required. So, this is the correct way of providing steel rebars in a secondary beam. Guys, these are just basic guidelines for beginners. If you want to master real RCC design for a whole building, we offer a complete structural design course from beginner to advanced level. In this course, you will learn to model a complete building project in ETAP software, apply loads according to IES codes, and understand how to read values from these codes. You will also perform analysis to determine the total number of bars needed for each column in the building and for the entire RCC structure including beams, slabs, staircase and footings. This is the method professional engineers use to design structures of all size in India. To start your professional civil engineering journey, you can join in this course today. Link is in the description box below. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe it and press the bell icon so you do not miss an update in the future. Till then, see you in the next video.